Global Gospel Family Church, we are fulfilling the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and make disciples. Anyone who would like to come and join us on our missions, you are invited. Anyone who would like to give financially, you can use the information you see below. Also, I just want to say thank you for your support in advance. Providence me earlier and said, God's yoke is easy. Yeah, yeah, huh? Hallelujah. And the rest of that scripture says, His burden is light. It's not heavy. Hallelujah. So, so if something's weighing you down and something's difficult, most likely it's not God. And it's more like you. But it was a great idea. A great idea and a God idea are two different things. Hallelujah. So we just thank God for all of you allowing him to have his way with you and hallelujah and just flow. You know, God called us to flow, never to hustle. Hey, oh, I like that. God is a God of a flow and not a hustle. Now, I'm going to talk to you about what the world speaks of as a hustle, but in God, it's different. Hallelujah. Somebody say, with God, it's different. Hallelujah. The scriptures say, if God be for us, who or what can be against us? Even gravity's different. Hallelujah. When you're walking with God. Even some of the natural turns into what we call what? Supernatural. Hallelujah. I tell people sometimes, ah, you know, people are amazed that I'm that I'm happily married. And I tell people all the time, I say, I'm not married, I'm happily married. Amen. That's right. Amen. But I'm happily married by God's grace. Hallelujah. No doing of my own, hallelujah, but I want to be happy, amen? amen? The Bible says he who troubles his own household will inherit the wind, and I like stuff, amen? <laughs> hallelujah, God has rewards for his people. He said if I diligently seek him, he's going to reward me, and I'm going to know where it came from, because all good and perfect things come from above, yeah. from the Father of lights, within whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. And then it says over there in the book of James in the first chapter that uh, uh, don't get it twisted. See, somehow we get, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. And sometimes we spend so much time here and get so familiar with things that should be unfamiliar at this point that we get it twisted sometimes, Mother White. And we think that it's us. Hallelujah. We think that it's maybe our mother and father. I thank God for my mother and father. But if you talk to them, the thing that I thank them for the most is their walk with God before my eyes. Amen. My father was talking to me about some family things and, and some things of value. And I said, Dad, I'm not worried about that. I said, you gave me the one thing that leads to everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The greatest gift you can ever give is the gift of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The gift of faith. Amen. You hear Paul over in the book of Timothy, admonish, uh, in the book of Timothy, admonishing <coughs> Timothy, the young pastor, and he was going through some things, some growing pains, and uh, he began to say, "Look, man, this same unfeigned faith that I saw in your grandmother, I also saw in your mother, and I perceive it to be in you as well." Somebody say, "It's in me." So he didn't talk about a family inheritance. He didn't talk about estates. He didn't talk about twin ponds. He didn't talk about, you know, him being the fresh prince of all your growth. But he talked to him about his what? Faith. Hallelujah. Because it's the only thing that pleases God. Hallelujah. You might be standing here and say, I don't have a job. Hallelujah. You might be standing here today saying, I don't have a house. You might be standing here today saying, I don't have a spouse. You might be standing here today saying, I don't have any good ideas. But one thing you have is faith. Because I'm telling you, faith brought you in this door. Hallelujah. Yeah. Faith drew you right past and allowed you to flow past the pandemic. Hello? Come flow on. past, hallelujah, a multitude of distractions and other wonderful things that you could have done today. You could have scurried around and, and, and checked some things off your Christmas list. You could have just stayed in bed and enjoyed the day and called it the Sabbath, even though you missed the Sabbath because the Sabbath was yesterday. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Today's the first day of the week, and that's when the church met on the first day of the week. They didn't meet on the Sabbath, but I'm not here. I'm really not here to talk about that. Amen. Turn with me quickly over. How many of you enjoying the service thus far? We had a little ship of mother style. Amen. Switch things up. My kids, they got left this morning, but let's give them a hand. Amen. Two out of three made it. 
would say the majority rules, but they had to walk to church today because they were moving too slowly. Amen. And Mama Bear wanted to hear her husband preach. Amen. Her husband preach. Amen. I was sitting over there. She said, you look nice. I said, thanks. I said, so do you. Amen. It's what you call cozy, cozy chic. Amen. <laughs> or COVID chic, whatever it is. But really what it is, the Bible says we must wear this world as a loose fitting garment. Isn't that what it said? Amen. Style always follows the revelation of God. You guys need to watch. Amen. What's going on in the world will show up everywhere else, but it really came from heaven. Hallelujah. And so let it be where? On earth. Amen. So we thank God. Thank God for all of you. Let's give the drummer and bass player some. Amen. I'm as messing with you, but I am going to get you a new carpet. <laughs> I'll just play with him. I'll play with him, but he did good. Amen. Let's give a band. They're awesome. They jump right in. Deacon, Deacon Scotty. He came over to me this morning. He's like, well, we piece some things together, and uh, uh, we got a little little thing going on. And he said, "How long you want me to go?" I said, "Well, I said, I said just go, man." And he's like, "Well, you know," and he was like saying like he only had a few things that they rehearsed. And I was like, "Man, you got hours and hours and days and weeks inside of you. I just let the Holy Ghost what flow. Didn't he flow this morning? Amen. Yes. If we allow him to, we let go of our plan, our schedule, our set. Hallelujah, and allow God to set us what off. Hallelujah. Amen." You just want to set it off, right? Everybody wants something to set off. Everybody wants something to pop. Everybody wants something to shine and bling. Well, let God have his way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I, I told my, I leaned over to my brother. This is the honest of God truth. I said, if my sister prophesied everybody in the church and get up and leave. <laughs> so I'm the prophet. Amen? I'm the true prophet. Amen? Uh, she got up and went, but that's all right. Prophets are strange, saints. Some of y'all get it. So you trying to figure out the prophet. You better try to figure out that the prophet's speaking for God and not doing what you want to do, hallelujah, but what God has told them to do. Amen. If you saw the prophets of old, they were strange. Yeah. They were different. They were unconventional. And that's why God can use them. Some of us are too orderly. Too orderly. Some of us are too stiff. Amen. Some of us are too regiment. Some of us are too perfect. God can't use us. God tells us what? God can't. Don't do that. God, well, can't be done then. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's thank God for Prophet Tashnika. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to help people be in the position that God has called them to. Hallelujah. You don't reject. You collect. Yes. Oh, y'all don't want to hear, but someone say, I don't reject. I don't reject. I collect. I collect. God's been really working on me and dealing with me about not allowing just the light of God and the love of God and all of the wonderful attributes of the Spirit of God uh, uh, shine to me, but also allow them to shine through me. And it's a prayer. You want to pray for me? Say, God, allow everything you're doing for the man of God, allow it to come through him so it can touch many others. Amen? Because I'm all right. Amen? Amen? But there's a whole world out there, hallelujah, Amen. that needs love. That needs peace. Yeah. That needs. Let me tell you something. God's been so good to me. If He never did another thing, Ooh. I wouldn't run out of things to preach on. I'm already convinced. I, I wouldn't say persuaded. I am fully persuaded. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. But let's look over here with me. Turn with me over to Psalm 126, and then we're going to look at Ecclesiastes 5, and we'll see how we do. And once again, I thank you for flowing with us this morning and thank you for flowing i even see some of you just in the groove and you, i see some of you looking in your closets this morning like i ain't gonna look crazy up here in this church i gotta get my stuff right <laughs> amen so i thank god for you just putting having a mind hallelujah how you enter into the lord and joining in i thank god for the praise and worship this morning we're, we're, we're getting there hallelujah my god maybe thank god for sister donna She's supposed to be part of my praise and worship team but It'll come, amen. It'll come in time, amen. Let's give her a hand. She's doing an outstanding job in the preschool, doing an outstanding job. And thank God for her. And, uh, once again, we don't reject, we what? Collect. Collect. Yes, amen. Maybe that's the word. But let's look here. Uh, when I say Psalm 126, a favorite song. Who likes Psalm 126? It's, it's a great song, and, and I like to look at it from this side, but whatever side or wherever you are in it, hallelujah, it's, it's all right. Hallelujah. And I hear the Lord saying, there is an expiration date to your pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Trouble does not last always. Thank you, Lord. Weeping endures for a night, but joy 
comes in the morning. Now, God's, I, I told someone the other day, I said, man, God is really good. They were talking to me, like, man, God's on this. And I said, yeah, 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 he is. I said, but you know, what God really needs, and I was being facetious, I was like, what God really needs is a calendar and a nice watch. Because <laughs> man, man, oh man, his time is different. His timing is different than my time. Yeah. And his ways are higher than my ways. So how I think it should be done and when I think it should be done is much different. But how many thank God that it's already done. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. What we're experiencing now, you have to understand, you are a tripart being. You are a spirit that has a soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Or we could further describe it as your soul is made up of your desires, your affections, your emotions, and your passions. Somebody say deep. That's the acronym for it. And then you have a body. This is your earth suit. And a lot of times we get caught up with what's going on with our earth, earth suit. And I always say, if you don't like the way something looks, change it. If you don't like what you're seeing, change the channel. If you don't like how something's fitting, then get something. What? I always say, you know, the world says if the hat fits, what? Wear. Wear. But if it's not the hat that you want to find your head, then don't wear. Don't wear. wear. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on now. Hallelujah. If the shoe fits but it's not the shoe that's becoming of what God has spoken of you, then get a new pair of shoes or do what the, uh, uh, my new age people do. They call it earthing. They take their shoes off. Hallelujah. Take shoe. You know, you weren't born, you know you were born with everything you need? That's right. Yes. I'll say that again. You weren't born with shoes. That's right. There's a whole lot of people that have a whole closet full of shoes, but they don't have feet. Mm -hmm. Or they're rolling around in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I bet you they, they gladly trade in those Louis Vuittons and those Christian Dior's and, and uh, 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 what's the other ones? What's the other ones? Oh, yeah, those are Christian Dior's. But what's the other ones? Do you always say they're comfortable? You don't get no quiet. You don't be quiet when you're in, in uh, Neiman Marcus. You don't be quiet. You don't be quiet when you're running through sex. Y'all got real quiet on me, amen? That was one of the, I think I was in the second. Jimmy Choo's. Jimmy Choo's always say they're comfortable and stylish. Hallelujah. All right, Psalm 120. Psalm 120. Prophet Evan say? Hallelujah. How many remember Prophet Evan? How many remember Prophet Evan did? Bless his soul, Prophet Evan. Hallelujah. You don't got to be here forever, saints. You really don't. You can come in, and come out, and do what you. He was. He had a major impact on my ministry. If you enjoy anything about the way God used me, I met him in California years ago. He had to be 16, 17 years old. And I was like, who is this boy wonder? And man, oh man, I mean, that guy, phew, I'm gonna talk about it today. That guy would dream. Man, that guy would dream. All right, watch this. Uh, Psalm 126, we'll watch this. And, and, and once again, there is a, somebody say, there is an expiration. There is an expiration. There is a period. There is a period. That God has placed somewhere in time on my problem. Hallelujah. Somebody say once and for all. See, God didn't leave you out. Hallelujah. You just have to include yourself. Amen? You know, some invitations are open. Come boldly to the throne of grace. That's an open invitation. But you don't know what I did last night. He says, come boldly. See, that's part of the boldness. That you really don't deserve to come, but God said what? Come anyway. Now, some of you have some children. Some of you have some friends that haven't been very good friends, been more like frenemies. Some of you have some children that have been acting like a, a, a pew, 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 when they want to talk about it. But they're your what? Children. And they're your friends. And what they don't realize is you love them. You just want them to love themselves. Amen. So you don't have the problem. And you want them, really, because you know you can do what? You can help them. If they would just sit down like the man of God said, it'd be teachable and reachable. And just what? Listen. Yes. Just listen. What did the prodigal son do when he came to himself? He's like, man, I just spent all the money. He said, I went out there, I was eating like a pig and doing all these different things. But he came to him, what? Self. And realized, I, in my what? In my father's house. Hallelujah. There's a whole lot going on there. And I, he said, even the least, hallelujah, are doing better than the best out here. Hallelujah. All right, now let's look here. So there's, somebody said there's a period. There's a period. That God has placed on my problem. 
God has placed on my heart. And here's the part. So you think that God's going to do it your way. He never does it your way. Because if he does it your way, then you're going to glorify yourself instead of glorify God. God wants the glory. Amen? Amen. So there's some things that only God can get you out of. There's only some things that God can get you through. Hallelujah. But if you just read and let go, that was prophetic. Yes. And even my sister, she said some things in there to uh, the couple back there. And then also she said it over there. I think to her mother, Sharon, said a couple of times. Oh, she's in the spirit. Amen. Look here, Psalm 126. Watch this. It says, when the who? Lord. The Lord. Somebody say, it's God's business. It's God's business. When the Lord turned again. Somebody say, he did it once, he'll do it again. Let me tell you, if he did it for one, he'll do it for all. Right. God, it, it, see, in, in uh, Supreme Court, a lot of decisions are made. When something is worthy of going all the way up into Supreme Court, there's some good judgments and there's some bad judgments. You have ones like Topeka versus Kansas. Forget what that one is. Uh, uh, you got Brown versus whatever, Board of Education. That's the one for integration and rightful education and all those different things. Some are bad. Roe versus Wade might not have been a great one. But God will give the people what they want. But nonetheless, once it goes up into Supreme Court or the higher court and it's judged a certain way, you can go into court and argue your case because it's similar to that case that's been tried, you know, at the highest level in the Supreme Court. I think you have your, like your common courts, you have your circuit courts, and then you have your uh, Supreme Court. But when they make that decision up there, then the law, it becomes precedent law. You ever heard of that? It becomes precedent law. I mean, it's been preceded and it's already been decided and the situations and the circumstances are similar to what someone else is going through. So instead of taking all the time to figure it out again and reinvent the wheel, just allow the wheel what? To roll. Hallelujah. So there's, if the world has precedent law, don't you think heaven does? Amen. That if a woman was able to receive her son Alive from the dead because the prophet laid on. Well, see, that's weird. Mm -hmm. To jump and lay on a, 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 a dead boy's body and then the life be restored to it. But it, it didn't just happen once in the Bible. It's happened many times for people that what? Believe. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say, faith, faith. is my currency. It's my currency. So you go to certain nations and they ask, what currency? Do you have francs? Do you have uh, drachmas? Do you have lyres? Do you have yen? Do you have U.S. dollars? What do you have? It's cu what currency are you using? Holly, so you say, my currency, my currency. is faith. It's faith. faith. See, you can have a whole bunch of money, but it's not going to move them out. You have a whole bunch of money, but it's not going to make someone come to their right mind. Hallelujah. Come on now. So, how many have tried to buy something that they can only get from God? Hallelujah. You, you can't hear you. God don't want your money. Hallelujah. You don't want your money. He, what does he want? He wants your heart. Hallelujah. He wants your what? Heart. If you seek me, hallelujah, with your whole heart, you'll mess around and find me. Hallelujah. How many found the Lord? Hallelujah. And he's good. Amen. So I'm going to say, so when the Lord turned again to captivity, I don't care. Some of you are here today because of what God did 40 years ago. What God said, hallelujah, the generation is over and he's about to start a new beginning. And what I did before, I'm going to what? Do it again. Hallelujah. God's not a... See, when you read that, God's not a respecter of persons. Everyone's like, God's going to get me. Yeah, God's going to get you. And what's he going to do when he gets you? He's going to bless you. Everybody's scared. God's not a respecter of persons. And, 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 and they always speak of that in judgment. God's not a respecter of persons. Hallelujah. He's a respecter of his word. Yes. He said, if you come to him and you confess your faults and confess your sins, guess what he's going to do? He's going to forgive you of your sin. And then he's going to justly and rightfully restore you back to a place of righteousness. And in the middle of it, he's going to cleanse you. He's going to touch your mind. Hallelujah. Some of us just haven't been thinking straight. You're not a sinner. You just got a little mental problem. <laughs> Things I want to do, I don't do. Things I don't want to do, well, well. I find myself preoccupied with. Mm. What am I what? Doing. <laughs> Same thing everyone else is doing. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Working on letting go and letting God yes. have his way. How many know that's a process? Yes. Because yes. the nearer and dearer it is to our heart, the harder it is to let go. Yes. Somehow, some way, we don't think God is wise enough to handle it. God, I trust you up to a point. But this thing here, I'm going to take care of it. I got, I got to keep watch over this. Well, we see what that's good, where that's gotten us. <laughs> Save yourself some time and some what? And some money. Amen. All right, let's get back to this word. It says, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that what? Dream. 
highlight that word dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they, among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Hallelujah. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the stream in the south. They that sow in tears shall, shall reap in joy. Yes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Be, I'm sorry, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. Saints, if you knew how precious the cargo was that you are carrying mm. and that God has hidden in your earthen vessel, you wouldn't be crying so much. You wouldn't be worried so much. You wouldn't be so concerned. If you remember that movie, Enemy in the State? I don't know, how many old enough to remember that? <laughs> Some of you don't even know what that is. Enemy of the State, great film. Amen, y'all y'all, showing your gray hair over there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Remember that movie, Enemy of the State? One of the biggest problems, he didn't understand why all his friends weren't returning his calls. He didn't understand why people were shooting at him. He didn't understand why he was having problems in his marriage. He didn't understand why his uh, uh, driving record was a little messed up. He didn't understand why his money was messed up because he possessed something yeah. that he wasn't aware of that was going to change the way things were. Yeah. And inside of you, Regardless of where you were born, regardless of your gender, regardless if you were born in a household of Muslims, and it doesn't matter. God puts something on the inside of you, hallelujah, that if you realize and that you begin to treasure and you begin to value and you turn it back unto God because God understands what it is. We'll never understand what it is. All the goings of man are of the Lord. How can we ever understand what's going on? The mind of a man plans his way, but the Lord has to direct your steps because you don't know what it was for. And if you did, you'd probably do something crazy. So he slipped, like in the movie, he slipped, his friend slipped something in his bag, but it was earth changing. It's going to change. And what you have in you, it, it brings about a change. That's why I look at the woman of God. The devil tried to kill her before she could even walk and talk. That's why her, her nickname. I guess in South Philly, where West Philly, wherever she was born, is Pina. Because she was in an incubator for a long time. And then when she got old enough to say mama, her mama went in the hospital. And maybe was on a ventilator and didn't make it. Everybody wants their mama. That's right. Everybody wants their dad. That's right. And if they had a choice, if I had to take one, who are they going to take? Mom. Uh-oh. Sorry, dads. <laughs> no, I'm going to just... <laughs> you pay the bill. You can find out what that noise is. Don't mess around. Sometimes you, like, first lady, she got a pink Chanel gun. <laughs> She'll gladly find out. I'll check on the noise. I don't want you to hurt nobody. Amen. Mighty Mouse will hurt you. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. Hey, where was I? Oh, wondering what's going on. Right. So if you knew the value, somebody say, they that go about, bring they that go about. bearing precious seed. Bearing precious seed. The crazy thing about a seed is, we don't, does a seed look anything like what it's going to be? No. It doesn't really, tell me a seed that looks like what it's going to be. I don't think there is one. That was probably an exception for everything, but, I, you know, I always use the example of a watermelon seed. It's flat. It's black. It's a lot smaller than what it's going to evolve into. Mm -hmm. But you just have to trust the what? Process. Now it says something there. It says those that go about. See, some of us, and that's what God really wants to talk about, some of us realize and believe that we have a watermelon seed. We believe that we have something small, but if we do the right thing with it, it's going to grow. And it's going to change. Now, what do we have to do with that seed? Do we have to change it? No. Well, guess what we got to do? Water it. Water it. No, we got to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I hear it again. We got to do what? Let it go. Let it go. There's some things that we are holding on to. And because we understand a little bit of its value and its potential, we will not release it out of fear. Jesus. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, right. but a spirit of power. And authority yes. and love yes. Thank you, and a sound mind. sound mind. 
sound enough to know if I really care about this thing, let me entrust it in the care of the Lord. Amen, amen. Lord saying, cast your cares upon me, yes. for I will care for it. Yes. Stop being so protected. So protective. So worried. But the, uh, uh, Jesus told the woman of God, and Mary and Martha, when he was in there, and Martha started to complain about her sister. And here's another thing. Stop complaining about people. People are not your problem. Your mother and father did everything and didn't do everything they were supposed to do. Just saying that. Because your yeah, mom and dad, you don't know anything about my mom and dad. You don't know what it was like to grow up in my house. You don't. I share stories sometimes, and they tell you see the outside, but you, you, you know, even George Jefferson, he, he was born next to the bunkers. <laughs> he had to move out and what? Up. Oh, but hey, come on now. Saints, you don't understand. It's a what? It's a process. Yes. But to leave people out of it. They're not, they're not the problem. Hallelujah. Hear the Lord saying, you can't focus on the problem and the promise at the same time. Keep your eyes on the prize. Mark the perfect man. His name is Jesus Christ. That's the one you need to worry about. And in him, you don't got to worry about. I told you all the time, I can only tell you, I, I don't tell you things that I think and I believe, I tell you things that I know. Yes, and I remember all this time, it was a point in my life early, I almost went crazy. Literally, almost lost my mind. I saw it flee. You see, people on the street just don't get there, saints. It's a process. Yeah. And if you live long enough, you find out. <laughs> Come on now. We're all about one and a half thoughts away from flying over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all know those alarm clocks. <laughs> Amen. Saints, it's a process almost worth it. But I knew where to go. And I knew with the cares and the concerns I had, I took them to God. And he walked me through the Bible. But I ignored it. I wasn't teachable and I wasn't reachable. I heard it, but I didn't receive it and I didn't believe it. But God is infinite mercy because I kept coming to him boldly, even though I was ignoring what he said. But it got so bad. I couldn't go anywhere else. I knew not to go to the doctor and have me all. Then, see, when you start taking that medication, yeah. then you really, because then you think it's good, mm -hmm. but nothing's changed. See, I want to change. Yeah. Right. Come on. Come on, saints. I didn't want to be all numbed up and couldn't yeah. fit. Pain has purpose. Yeah. It lets you know something's not right. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to go in this direction, you're going to hurt yourself and someone else. You can live without a hand, but I'd rather have my hand because I was born with it. I hear the Lord saying, you were born with every single thing you need. Everything. See, I put my, the, 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 the hot stove isn't there to hurt you or the pain that you feel when you put your hand on the hot stove isn't there so you don't touch the stove. It's there so that you can keep your what? Hand. Because if you ignore the pain, eventually you're not going to have a hand. Right. And the Bible talks about our conscience being seared. When I say that, I'm right there, our conscience being seared, that we've ignored the what? The pain. Now you take the pain and you put it in its proper place and you say, God, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And then God has a way Ooh. of breathing on you. God has a way of kissing that boo-boo, and Lord have mercy. It don't seem to hurt that much. Thank you, Lord. How many know what I'm talking about? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I've had the Lord sing. I mean, I was going through a painful situation, and just because I thought I was, somebody said, you thought he was grown. Thought he was grown. Thought he was grown. Isn't that how we get emotional? That's the greatest sign of immaturity. Yes. You swear you grown. Yes, <laughs> Fine. Fine. You look grown. You dress grown. But, you know, in your faculties, you were very immature. Right. Then you find yourself in a situation that, you know, you say, oh, that's what mom was talking about. That's what the Bible was for you. That's what the church lady was that man. Oh, and you all, oh, man, they're like, hey, girl. and then you got a call for something. See, then, then you get in the pride. the Lord saying, humble yourself. Humble yourself. So we need to go home. 
Now home, I speak of metaphorically. But some of you need to go home. Home to that place of prayer. Home to that place of giving. Home to that place of forgiving. Home to that place of just being a child. Jesus said, unless you come to me as a child, mm -hmm. yeah. you won't experience a true conversion. Unless ye are converted like this child. And you know when he said that? Jesus was somewhere ministering, and he wanted to use an example, and he was a great teacher. And he said, he called a child over to him. And he says, unless you be converted like unto a child. But funny thing, if you call a child today, what happens? Now, back in the day, if you called a child, and there was a delay. <laughs> what? We're talking about an action film? <laughs> <laughs> now they could be what 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 I'll be like my son I'll be like bro if you you lucky I'm peaceful no one do but like so 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 what I'm saying is guess what I believe when the Holy Ghost showed this to me I believe Jesus called a couple of kids and some were like I don't gotta listen to you you're not my mom. You're not my dad. I believe Jesus called a couple kids. The other kids were like, hold on. I heard that you were the Messiah, but I also heard that supposedly God came to you and got your mom pregnant. Yeah, right. Because that's immature. You're in grown folks' business. I hear the Lord saying, mind your business. That's immaturity. And there's a spiritual immaturity, too. Some things you don't talk about. Some things, and I tell you, when you get really mature, See, because you're talking about it, because you were thinking about it. The scriptures say, cast down every vain imagination. You cast them down. Not vain imagination, vain imaginations. You will do what? You cast them down. And to me, that requires a little bit of what? Energy. Let that thing do Well, I just ignore. No, you got to do what? Cast it down got to invest in it a little bit. You got to be concerted about it. But if you allow that stuff, what, 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 what do you say? You know, the bird, you can allow the bird to fly over your head, but if you allow it to what? Nest? You're going to have a problem. Then you're going to have birds. And then you're going to be cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> Bring every thought. Mother Sharon, am I in the word? Yes, sir. I'm being extreme. No, sir. Come hold the mic. No, sir. And it's purple. I'm being extreme. Every thought. You ever have one thought get loose? Let one mouse run around. Let one roach that came from your neighbor's house. <laughs> Better pull out the rain. Lord have mercy. Let that stuff run around. It says bring it into what? Captivity. And here's the thing about doing this before. See, some of us have thoughts in captivity. Didn't we turn them into pets? You ever see those signs? Please don't feed the animals. We were in Aruba, and there was a black swan. Supposed to be three, I only saw one. And he said, don't feed. I was first lady, she wanted to do it for the grand. <laughs> <laughs> she went and picked something up and put her hand out. That black swan said, <laughs> she was like, ah, he attacked her. <laughs> but then it was good for the grand. It was an exciting film. But anyway, <laughs> that thing got her, amen? And some of the thoughts, saints, that we like to feed, hear the Lord saying, Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Put it in captivity and discard it. Put it in the sea of what? Forgetfulness. Did you remember it? No more. Hallelujah. Somebody say precious seed. Precious seed. Somebody say I have treasure. I have treasure. In this earthen vessel. In this earthen vessel. <sighs> see, then, you, then, your, see, then your attention and your focus changes. It's not, why is everybody hating on me? Why did it so hard? Once you realize you're caring, it's like a football player. Get every 
athlete wants what? The ball. Don't they? They want the ball. Every athlete. What, well, we'll use Mark Dallas, Ezekiel Elliott. He has a good name at least. Yeah. Got nice hair. Yeah, he's got some things. Yeah. Remember, we collect, we don't reject. Right. Amen. <laughs> but every time he runs and breaks tackles and goes through the line and, and, and advances, he always goes like this. Mm -hmm. And what's that mean? Feed me. Yeah. Give it to me. I want it. See, but he's not like, oh my God, they're trying to hit me. <laughs> he's like, man, whether they hit or miss, I'm cashing that million dollar check tomorrow. Amen. It's saints. Whether the devil hits or misses, keep moving forward. Yes. What is in your hands is precious. Yeah. It is so precious that other people want it too. Yeah. Hear the Lord saying, stop whining. Because I've blessed you. Stop whining because I've favored you. Stop whining because I've healed you. And now you got to take your bed up and walk. He, that barren, precious seed. But you gotta let go of it. You gotta get it out of your hand. And into the ground. Into the dirt. Into this earth. Do what he does. Won't grow in your hand. It won't grow in the Buke uh, Guggenheim Museum off of uh, 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 one of them valley roads up in the in the valley. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you in a second. Topanga Canyon in California. It's not gonna grow up there. We have too many things on display. We need to be in the ground. You know what the ground is? Dirt. Undesirable. Where you thought nothing good could come from. What you thought didn't mean anything and didn't matter. And God sees everything. And don't you think for a second, the one little thing that you do, not for people, but for the Lord, that God's not going to turn around and do something for you. He'll bless you. You walk to this woman's house, it's not because her husband's a doctor. It's because of all the men coat she's taken off her back. <coughs> It's because for three years she slept on a on a pullout bed. And I tell you, I always say, oh, there's no comfortable pullout bed. <laughs> nope. None. Two years slept right next to the, to, to the door that goes out to the hallway. In Green Hill Park. It's a nice apartment building. But my sister had a room. I had a room. And Mark had a room in his house. <laughs> 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 so everybody, all the kids were comfortable. But there was sacrifice, saints. But something in her knew that the precious seed of faith was enough. Yes. And she would go from WB812, the West Building, 8th floor, 12th apart. Details, not fairy tales. Because somebody wondering, how did you get that house? How did you get that house? Faith, saints. Faith. And God's not a respecter of persons. Value what he has given you. It's enough. You were born with it. Purpose included. Everything you need. You don't need anything else. You need to let go of everything else and focus on what you have. Yes. It's enough. I tell you, it's more than enough. You saw your, you didn't have your mother, but you had your grandmother. And I don't know if your grandmother was perfect, and probably not, because I haven't met anyone perfect. But she perfected you enough that when she got paid, you said she always took her ties and put them on the dresser. And you said you took note of that. So what did you do? When you got paid, you started separating yourself. Or detaching yourself from what was God. Saints, your children, they're gods. Maybe that's part of the problem. 
I'll tell you, the day I got delivered was the day my parents left me alone. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what happened? About two weeks later, Jesus walked into my apartment. The rest is history. Some 200 miles away. Maybe what you can't do for your child, you could do for someone else's child. But if you do it for someone else's child, God will turn around and do it for your child. Yes. And known to happen. Yes. Come on, bless you, God. Hear the Lord say, let it go. Let it go. Yes, Lord. I'm even going to let go of the direction I'm trying to go. So I hear what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, trust me. And let it go. Stop worrying about it. Stop thinking about it. I'll tell you like you told me. Think and worry about me. You'll find out everything else is all right. Let us stand. So I mean, I realize that we already did communion. We already had the prayer line. We already got anointed with oil. And we got the word. I mean, heard what the Spirit of the Lord was saying. Saints, let it go. Let it go. It's precious. It's precious. But the process is of the Lord. It won't grow in your hands. God, let it get dirty. How many are grateful for some of the worst things in, the, in their lives they went through? Amen. Yes. Some things scare you to death, other things scare you to life. Amen. What did that, what did that show? Scared straight? Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't gotta tell me again. <laughs> you don't gotta tell me again. Whoa, whoa. Taste to see that the Lord is good and taste to see that the devil is bad. <laughs> Works both ways. Works both ways. Some things, no, I can't. Some things, look, I'm brave. But I ain't messing with that one. And how I know? Because I tried it. <laughs> I couldn't handle it. Don't do the crime. If you can't do the time. Hallelujah. Your God saying, let it go. It's precious. He understands the value more than you. See, but once you get hit, hit saints, you know what's cool? Like, just staying with that... Uh, um, enemy of the estate. He was carrying it. And as long as he was carrying it, he was experiencing a lot of problems. So what would be the smart thing? Once you realize you have it, let it go. Yes, Lord. Let it go. Someone say, hand it off. Hand it off. To Jesus. to Jesus. Hand it off. Hallelujah. Hear the Lord saying, feed me. Feed me. Give me the rock. I'll take it in. I'll take that black flat seed and turn it into something. Saints, this is the season of the wonderful. This is the season of the wonderful. And all God's requiring of us is faith. There is so much grace because everyone else is like locked in somewhere, hunkered down. It's just fine. But where sin does abound, God's grace does abound. I'm telling you, saints. the time to give, not because it's Christmas, but because there's great grace. Now's the time to forgive, because man, you forgive others your trespasses, God will turn around and what? Let you know you forgive. You're already forgiven. He's going to let you know you forgive. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it go, saints. God says, doubtless, you shall Return from the field rejoicing with so much increase 
in so much power. All you're going to be able to say, if I had known it was this good, I would have let go of this hot potato a long time ago. Isn't that right, Mother Sarah? Hallelujah. And Mother Sarah, at your tender, wonderful age, are you still learning to let go? It's a process, thanks. But the sooner we get started, the better it gets. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your visitation. We thank you for everyone that is pressed out in faith. Lord, you know what lies inside the hearts of every individual that's here and that's near and dear to them. Lord, whatever we've been holding on tightly, whatever uh, ever place in our lives we've come to you with a closed fist, we, we open our hearts and we open our hands, we open our minds, we open our ears, we open our spirits unto you. We give it all to you. We trust you with it because we know that you are the God of increase. You said one man plans, another one waters, but only you can transform it. Only you can breathe on it and multiply it and cause it to grow. Forgive us for our fear. Forgive us for our apprehension. Forgive us for our feet that we have dragged to the altar. But Lord, we stand here today and give it all back to you. And in the wonderful name of Jesus, the people of God said, yeah.